Good afternoon and welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a specialist in helping women heal their hearts and a passionate champion of the divine feminine as well. That's quite a, <laughs> quite a mouthful. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, that's who I am. And these broadcasts every day are called message, Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's number 350, another milestone. And as, a, as usual, the topic came from a conversation, or it seems to come from conversations. Last night I was with a friend of mine, and this came a conversation. So I had this thought about talking about chivalry. Saying, and the question, so the topic today is, is chivalry dead or is it just on life support? Um, I think more of the latter, thankfully. Considering being dead would be a whole other story. But I want to speak in, into this a couple of ways. One is about how men can be better at being gentlemen. But secondly, and it's going to push some buttons, how ladies have been making chivalry harder to do. Yes, I'm going to go there. So bear with me, shall we? Let's get started and jump into this. So, first of all, now, if you didn't realize or hadn't heard me before, I'm not from America originally. I'm actually from England. So... You love a chivalrous man. Great, I'm glad to hear that. So let me explain what that's more about for those who don't know what that is. And secondly, how ladies can um, encourage, invite, and appreciate that more. Because some of us have had our, um, I want to say, our efforts shut down. <laughs> to say the least. Excuse me one second, I'll be right back. I just had to blow my nose. Hang on, right, be right there. Right. Dropping cables everywhere. All right. So continuing, it's a very unprofessional approach, but what, is it? what the hey? So gentlemanly conduct. What that can look like, and I talked about an, model, an example I used a while ago. I'm going to use it this time. We'll see. But what it looks like for men is to be in service and respect of women. That's the simplest way of putting it. And that can mean as simply as opening the door for a woman, helping her on with a coat. Um, the one I keep remembering to do, so I was forgetting for a while, is walking on the street side of a woman when I'm walking along the street with her on the sidewalk. Um, so this is the simplest way of putting it. But what I'm noticing a lot, and this is the thing I want to speak to first. I'll get back to the other part in a minute. What I want to speak to first, though, is how many women have been making that harder to do. And I know this, I feel rather, that's why I know this, but I feel this ties back in way back to the women's liberation movement, to the feminist movement back of the early, actually the late 60s. And a lot of women have been unjustifiably fighting for their space in the world, so to speak, to take up the space, to, to, to take their lives on and to be fully independent and take care of themselves and doing everything else. And what's happened is the women since that point have sometimes had to fiercely defend their space. Again, understandably, because it's really a fairly modern experience for women to have their autonomy, their freedom to do whatever they want to do. But one of the repercussions, or one of the side effects of that for some women and some men, is that some women find a man being chivalrous offensive. Yes, the word I used is offensive. There are women, frankly, who are so dug into their position of taking care of themselves and handling all their own life their own way they want, they fear that any man who offers support is trying to take their power away. At least that's the, that's the warning I believe they carry. Which I understand. Now, if a woman is coming from a place of fierceness because she wants to defend her space and is verbally offensive to a man who's offering support to open the door for her, because I've had experience before, and I'll use this, this example, where I'd, it was a coffee shop, I'd open the door for a woman, and her response, rather than saying thank you or walking straight through, was, I can do that myself, I don't need your help. Now, my response was I didn't change my action. What I said to her was, I'm not saying you can't do it, but I respect you enough to open the door for you. That actually upset her even more, <laughs> to be honest. But that's the reality. This is not about control or power. It's about respect. At least that's the way I hold it. So chivalry to me, as I said at the beginning, is an act of service and respect for a woman by a man. And that's a traditional thing I know from my upbringing, being from England, it's kind of in my DNA. But I'm watching it be 
mutilated, at least in my environment where I'm watching it, looking around me, where people do stuff like that. And this, is all, this thing about chivalry is not about romantic relationship, by the way. It's about um, masculine, feminine, res masculine respect of femininity, as well as men treating women with dignity. So it's not about romanticness by any stretch of the imagination. But yes, if you do it in a relationship, even better, because some of you don't do that relationship, by the way, but also in just in daily life. You know, finding, like, just as I said last night, walking with my friend. She and I are friends, business associates, and we're walking down the street, and I had to literally almost, like, switch sides with her to be on the street side of where she was walking. It's interesting, though, because I watched the hazards of walking down the sidewalk with the street where there's cars and also people coming out doorways without looking because I was we're walking up the street I watched these two young women walk by walk up actually and walk up right across everybody to get into the place they're going to without any buy or leave excuse me or anything like that and I would guess they're early 20s and I'm not and I'm not attempting to categorize a demographic by the way but I'm very aware that some people in general men and women haven't been raised with the idea of respect or dignity or chivalry on giving or receiving side so there's a gap in, i believe in education of the culture and that's been something that's erroneous i believe so what i'm going to offer perhaps is a cliff notes version of what can be done <laughs> as well as an invitation to have you look at this in your own life whether you're a man or woman on which side of the the the, the experience you're on to see if you can raise the bar to improve this because one thing is I know there, and this was talking to my friend last. Talking to my friend last night, she said her daughter um, actually expects her door to be opened. In fact, she won't even enter unless somebody opens the door for her. Now that's a little bit beyond the respect side, and and as she said, unfortunately she was raised that way, where she has this expectation which is so full on, she didn't realize it may be a little bit um, affrontive. But the thing about where if you're walking, where a man's walking with a woman, where she is where he walks her basically something ahead of him. That's the other part, by the way. One sign of being respectful and dignity in this area is where a man and woman are walking together. He doesn't walk ahead of her. Unless. Unless he's protecting her from a big crowd ahead or some other thing where she's behind him for protection. That's different. But I see couples walking along, um, including ones on camera, I see on TV, where the man's walking ahead of the woman. And it's not respectful. It's not That, that isn't chivalry. That actually is ego. And it's a whole other conversation a whole other conversation. Let me get my English correct there, at least. So the opportunity for raising the bar in your daily interactions, because this is, again, not about romantic relationships. If a single day can make a difference. Anytime you're out in the world, going into a store, going into a, a restaurant, going into a library, going into any building, frankly, getting on the bus, how can you be receiving that chivalry and also giving that chivalry from a place of respect for each other. That's a question I'm inviting you to take on as your homework, by the way. There's a piece in there, there's another piece I want to drop in this. One more piece about the women. I want to re recircle, circle back around that thing about what I said. Women who I've discovered have found them, have, have chosen to be resentful of the offer. If you're in that position, ladies, I ask you to look inside and see where you're actually not feeling safe in your own power. Because I strongly believe that if you're unwilling to um, allow a man to open the door for you because you feel it's going to take away your power take away, or trying to control you, there's some healing to be done. Because a man opening the door for you has no influence on your power, your choice, or your freedom. If you think there is, there's a piece inside that needs to be resolved. I'm just going to say that one there. That's a... That's a an invitation, if you want to go deeper, I can help you with that. But that's something we'll talk about. I want you to think about is if you're not letting that happen, what are you not letting into your life? Because the other part of this too is, ladies, when a man opens the door for you, that's an opportunity to receive the service of a man in a healthy, clean, and detached way. And if you don't take those opportunities up, you're missing out on that. So maybe your receiving muscle needs some flexing. Maybe you've been giving too much and pushing too much and making things happen too much. When someone does something for you, you don't even know how to deal with it. Just some thoughts to provoke your thinking about this. Speak to the men for a moment. If you're so beaten up by women, so you won't give your service to them by offering them, a, offering them a hand with a door or their bags or whatever it is, that's a lesson too. Have you basically given up because you're not willing to hold true to your values? 
I believe all of us men can do this regardless of how many times women say no, but keep offering because that's a way of being that's not about trying to get something, take something or, or do something other than serve. And, you know, giving up your seat on the, tra- on, the, on the bus or the train or helping them with the bags. I'm just throwing out these ideas of what can be done as opportunities. But the thing about it is to offer. Because a lot of times the offer um, can be given without attachment. And when you give that offer, men, to women, they may say no. They may not be interested. They may not even desire to. But the offer's intact. And that is a piece of the, piece of the ownership of being in integrity. But again, ladies, if you're not willing to receive offers that way, um, Joyce had a question, is the way to to let a guy know you would appreciate that chivalry if they aren't doing it? Is there a way? Mm. Um, If you're speaking about in a romantic, like a personal intimate relationship, the invitation or the um, request is okay when you say it on the lines of something like, you know, honey, um, I love it when... If you see someone do it for somebody else, you can nudge your guy on the, and say, I like that. Maybe you do it for me sometime. I mean, you can play with it. Depends on your connection and communication, let's say it that way. If it's somebody, I mean, I'm guessing if it's somebody you're close to because it's just general men in the, in the world, unfortunately, it's hard to coach them unless they want the coaching because coaching is an invitational process, not a forced process. Trust me. <laughs> in my line of work, I know that. Um But truthfully, if you are looking how to educate your man about chivalry, yes, you're dating him. Okay, so here's what I suggest. Things where where you see it illustrated, either on TV or in person, and you can lean into him and say, honey, I'd love it when you do that for me. Make it invitational versus you never do this for me, because that's definitely the wrong approach, just so we're clear. But invitational allows for the play and the dance to happen. Because you can make it flirtatious even. Again, depends how you're connected. Depends how deep you are in dating, by the way. Again, because dating has the, has a whole range of of, of um, what that means for people. Just to be clear, so having your opportunity to say in flirtatious ways, in in invitational ways, you know, you know, I love how I love how, and there's another way. Another way you can say this, by the way, just another one that popped in is, you know, it makes me feel very uh, feminine, or makes me feel very very taken care of when you do this for me. So things that make him feel good to do it for you. And you can say things also to him that could be um, boosting his ego, truthfully. Saying, you know, when you open the door for me, it makes me, you, you seem so chivalrous and such a gentleman. I really appreciate that. These sort of ways of saying it, I hope you're getting a sense of this, Jane, Joyce, of how you can actually say this in a way that is positive, is... Um, invitational and also flirtatious but also makes it where he would actually want to do it so making the making the invita- making the request from an invitational place versus a demand is definitely the way to do it I hope that helps um, I think that's given the points but again so men and women both have room to grow men and women both have opportunities to enjoy and men and women both have ways to do it you dated the guy previous you dated a guy I'm just previously who did it perfectly very chivalrous the new guy does some things, but not too much. I do show him I appreciate when he does it. That's good. And lucky you had a guy before who did that. Now, I'm guessing he didn't do everything perfectly, otherwise you would still be with him. But I appreciate that, Joyce. Um, yes, so you're welcome. We're well, welcome, Joyce. So the new guy, he, the fact he's already doing it, reinforce what he's doing right. The best thing to start from, and I will say that, is to really encourage him. Because when he does that, you, you just you know, put your hand on it. And, and by the way, for most men, you touch his arm or his shoulder when he does that for you and look in his eyes and say thank you, he will do more of that. <laughs> we respond to that very well. Just so you know, men very much respond to that encouragement that is that connects because it turns us on. When we get turned on to do that for you, we know it helps you. So it's a, it's a win-win all around. So those, those tips hopefully will help you, Joyce, of ways you can actually um, encourage, invite, and actually create more, fl- more chivalry from your man to you. So that hopefully helps you, all right? So I think that covers it. So you've already gave me your homework earlier, um, as I mentioned. And if you are stuck, and I did say if you have issues, I can help you with this. So when I mentioned a little bit how I can help you, this is how I can help you. I do offer a daily, in my daily broadcast, because I do this every day in case you haven't watched my broadcast before, 
I do usually during the broadcast offer a discovery session with me, which is called a complimentary clarity conversation, which is my gift to help you get where you want to go. It's a free gift, it's a 30 minute conversation where we can talk on the phone and you can tell me what's going on and I can see it, give you some steps and guidance and some keys. And at the end, I can also offer you how I can help you if that lines up for you. If you want one of those gifts, you can take one of those from me by going to my website, which is my name, barryselby.com. Well, my name is Barry Selby, add the dot com. <laughs> I make it so clear sometimes. And I click, click on the Let's Chat um, option in the menu. You can sign up for a discovery session, session there. If you haven't seen my other broadcast, by the way, um, or you can go to barrysubby.com forward slash chat if you want to type it in, in the URL. If you haven't seen my other broadcast, by the way, you can find these on my business page, which is, which is where the, pretty much the only thing that's on there is my broadcast on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Or you can see them on my YouTube channel because they do end up on there as well. And that is uh, the channel is Barry Selby and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. If you have any questions or comments about this broadcast and I didn't get some during the broadcast, I'll answer them when I sign off if you're watching the replay. If you know anybody who should watch this, hint, hint, please share it with them. And uh, I'll offer you how I can help you. And that's it. You've got your homework. And that's, that is number 350 wrapped. I'll be back in tomorrow, number 351. And uh, who knows what that'll be about. So if you're a man, be chivalrous. And if you're a lady, let a man help you. That'll do. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.